production is just huge you know like there's like I, I think thousands of people actually involved in creating that show just so, the show just the production of the yeah yeah, okay. yeah. And, and the you know just the equipment and everything and just being there it, it, everything has to be so organized so being a part of it it was it just felt like a really well oiled machine mm -hmm. uh, very complicated but it was all really well oiled and just being in there it was like it was such an experience did you get to know any of the other artists performing from any other countries particularly well i did um i Who? got to know well I, I got to know a bit of everybody i mean most people but um the guy from poland called nick Howell. um you know like he was very like unique he had this long curly hair better hair than me and then <laughs> black painted uh, fingernails um but he loved dancing and he loved i don't know he was a bit weird but he, i like that you know because yeah. i'm weird too a bit off the wall yeah yeah it was <laughs> awesome and then of course um the guy from belarus who uh, told everyone he's going to perform naked with wolves um <laughs> he was cool he was um he was a funny man as well very cool um yeah and and you know i, I could go on but it's just yeah it was so good to just get to know people from yeah. countries that i would never kind of you know, get to meet otherwise. Get to meet, yeah. You just said you're weird. You're not weird. You're cool. Why does Dami Yim think Dami Yim's weird? <laughs> well, I, I just think, I don't know, I'm weird. I, I think, um, oh, you think when, you know, these pop stars that we see every day, like, you know, they're, they're amazingly, like, beautiful, like Beyonce, and they're just like, get everything perfect and all of that. But I think for me, I, I just never imagined I would be become that. And, and that's the reason I thought I would never make it as an artist. But I, I still found so much, I mean, more, much more success than I've ever imagined in my life. And I, I think that's because I'm uh, I'm weird, but also in, everybody's weird, right? And, and people kind of relate. <laughs> I know I am, and now you are. Yeah, you're That makes weird. two of us. <laughs> <laughs> if you just turn on your wireless or your laptop or your smartphone, Dami Yim is my guest. Uh, you know that she's a Queensland girl originally from Logan. Where do you where do you park? Where do you sleep at the moment? Do you do you do you go back home to Logan, or do you are you dragged around the world by your agent, or where where do you actually live today, Dami? Oh, I am still living in Logan. Mm -hmm. Um, so good. Yeah, but only when I come home. So I, I've been home. I came home yesterday from Sydney. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, this this morning actually I had the big um, welcome home celebration in Logan with kids from my high school that I used to go to and you know other citizens of Logan okay. um, which was lovely and just just great being back home what like, so what did, the, what did the the gang from school ask you about what did they want to talk to you about oh I guess um they they just told me you know what what advice can you give give us and I just mm. said you know like when I was at school I was this um quiet pianist I played I accompanied the choir I played piano I, I was in the orchestra all of that but I never had the courage to come and sing and you know I mean I don't think I was that great at that time to be honest but I, I just told them you know just be brave and don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone because you just never know how far it can take you and yeah I really meant that for the kids. Yeah you don't have to be a good singer to be successful in music do you look at Bob Dylan <laughs> or look at Peter Garrett. Peter Garrett. <laughs> well they're special they're very special. Oh. <laughs> So, do you feel relaxed back in Logan? Is it sort of is it a place where you psychologically relax? Because you, like you, you travel around the world. You do media appearances and signings. You go to stores. You go to events. You know, and you're constantly, in a sense, you're always having to be Dami Yim the package. But where does Dami Yim the woman go when she's not being watched, oh. interviewed? Well, I when I'm, you know, home in Logan, I like to. I guess spend as much time as I can with with my husband, with my brother, um, and my friends. I guess mm -hmm. that you know that I've known for years, and just just really low key, just go to their houses, have you know, have a meal, have like coffee. Um, you know, I, I I go grocery shopping <laughs> like ev like everybody else. Does anyone that. say, hey, I just saw Dami in Coles? No way, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I I you know like I go like without any makeup and like really bad clothes and then like people not not many people recognize which is good <laughs> I don't want them to but sometimes they ask me for a photo I'm like are you sure because I don't look like Dami at the moment <laughs> <laughs> my guess is Dami in one we're streaming live on our Facebook page the interview with Dami so you can go to the six twelve ABC Listen Facebook page 
and actually uh, see the interview with oh, Dami. Oh, like. really? They can see me? Yeah, but you look oh. perfect, woman. Okay. You look, you look oh, ridiculously like, perfect. Yeah, I'm going to start like... I, uh, know. I, I know some of <laughs> you would like to know, Are you? do you design your own outfits or do you have a designer? Because I... you always look smashing on stage. <laughs> oh, thank and you've got a fabulous outfit on now. Is this, <laughs> is this yours or someone else's? I work with a an amazing stylist. Her name is Heather Cairns. Um, I, we've been working together since X Factor and we just really got along so well. You know, she was, she, she really had a great sense of fashion and style. So, um, yeah, we normally talk about, I mean, what, what I want and then she'd, she'd tell me what she thinks and whether that's possible, how we can make it work. And then sometimes, you know, she gets someone to make the clothes or sometimes, um, we, we find like an Australian designer. So like for, for Eurovision, we approached Stephen Khalil, who's one of the most, you know, well-known um, Australian couture designers, and he designed it, and we, mm -hmm. we all do it together, basically. Okay. My guest is Dami Yim. Does your husband ever feel he has to compete with your fame? <laughs> no. I know um, some husbands and wives do that, and I feel like if it was the other way, I would feel jealous, but my husband, he's really an amazing man and it's you know I really mean that because I you know as I said if it was the other way I would feel threatened but he's always just so supportive he just wants the best for me he's happy he's he has this amazing career of his own as a uh, social a community social worker he's you know built his career but he's mm -hmm. happy to give that up and and uh, help me with mine and I just don't have any words to say he's just so so amazing I'm so lucky what do you do to relax to relax mm. uh, you still play piano I do I play piano at home I play mm. whatever I want to play just make things up mm -hmm. um, watch TV I, I, I like to watch I don't know just whatever's on TV like cooking shows and do you really? yeah or okay. or Korean soap operas a great way to relax. Tell me about a Korean soap opera. I don't, I don't believe I've ever seen a Korean soap opera. You know, it's actually quite huge, not just in Korea. It's like I've seen, like, I've actually met like crazy Korean soap opera fans in Australia, like, um, and all over the world, seriously. Um, they're usually, I don't know, every one of them are different, but they can be quite dramatic. And, and sometimes, like, when I watch that, Normally they're about romances, so mm -hmm. it just like takes my mind off everything. And there are a lot of Koreans. I'm, I was reading some stuff, about, some demographics about Brisbane recently, about the different cultures that are living here now. And one of the big increases in cultures from overseas was Koreans. Oh. Was there a reason why Koreans came to Australia in particular? It was news uh, to me. Well, I think um, it, it's... For, well, for our family, it was because of how... Uh, the you know nature and how beautiful Australia was and still is. Um, I came when I was nine. My dad thought you know Korea is a great country, but you know it's polluted. It's you know crowded. You know the city is very you know it's like it's the city everywhere basically. Okay. But Australia is so relaxed. You know the green grass. There's so much freedom to just you know as kids you can be kids and we really, I mean he really liked that. For mm -hmm. us, so that's, I, I guess that's, I, I'm imagining that's what everybody else is thinking as well. Okay. Dami Yim is my guest. You would know her as a performer. If you live in Logan, you would know her as one of Logan's own. I think you, you performed in choirs, you played piano. Mm -hmm. What were you doing for fun in Logan as, as you were growing up? Oh. Did you play any sport? I, I play tennis, mm -hmm. actually. I, I mean, I'm not very sporty. I, I'm pretty uncoordinated, but uh, <laughs> I did sports, mm -hmm. sp tennis, swimming, uh, play squash. What else? Um, but, oh, we go to the hyperdome. Do you really? <laughs> we go shopping. <laughs> um, you yeah. are Australian woman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, we have Macca's and, and shop at Supre. <laughs> that was me when I was growing up. <laughs> when you went to the Logan Hyperdome, you're wandering through with mum and dad. You're a young woman. Did you ever wonder what you wanted to be when you grew up? What were your childhood mm, dreams is I, what I'm asking you. I just, I always assumed I would become a classical pianist, who a concert pianist, um, who's famous all over the world as a concert pianist. But... It was only because that was what I was good at, and 
you know, I, I started at a young age and um, I came to Australia, I couldn't speak English, but I could play the piano and my friends and teachers, they started to kind of like go, oh, hang on a second, she's actually good at something. I thought she, she couldn't speak. She, So I guess I'm assuming they probably thought I was really dumb because I can't say anything. And I played piano, so I kind of stuck with it. And then I started winning lots of, you know, estate bits, community estate bits in Brisbane and, mm -hmm. and then bigger competitions. So I just assumed that was my path. But inside, I really wanted to sing and to be a pop singer. And uh, I started to listen to Spice Girls and, you know, Kylie Minogue and Mariah Carey. And it, it just became, you know, a, a dream. So you've done it. You've achieved your life's dream or your childhood dream. Yeah, somehow it happened. <laughs> but the, the, isn't that fact? And there's not many people can say that they've achieved their childhood dream. I, I feel like I've achieved more than what I ever dreamed of. So. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Now your mum's an opera singer, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Is she one of those tiger mums? You know, often hear about some of the Asian tiger mums that yes, yes. You know, drive their Definitely children. Definitely know some of them. <laughs> Thankfully, mum mum wasn't one of them. Okay. She uh, she actually never told me to sing, or she really didn't really care. It seemed to me she didn't care about my singing. Mm -hmm. um, she sometimes nudged me, shouldn't you be practicing piano? Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, nah. <laughs> and she she did do that, but never forcefully. And then singing was something that I just did in my bedroom and I didn't want mum to hear it because I I guess as a teenager you don't want your parents to know what you really want to do and what you're doing and um, when she finally heard me sing uh, in my 20s and I sounded you know pretty good and and then she was like oh you know I didn't know you could sing <laughs> so you go like mother like daughter well yeah now now she can claim mm. <laughs> Now, are you played in Korea? Like the whole K-pop thing, I know yeah. sometimes there's some Korean girl girl groups, but are you played over there? Because we see K-pop on you know, yeah. SBS Asia here, don't we? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, K-pop is huge around the world, but obviously I'm not a K-pop artist. No. I'm an Australian artist who has a Korean background. But yeah, I actually, I do hear, when I visited Korea to you know see my family and friends and relatives, I kept hearing my song at cafes and... On the streets they were being played I mean like they um, they listen to mostly k-pop and Korean music but when they listen to pop songs it's they definitely um, choose to listen to me so yeah I'm very very proud of that should Australia sponsor something like Asia vision like here we are in Queensland where sort of that that pivot point to Asia for much mm -hmm. of Europe and the Americas there was someone raised an idea that we actually have an Asia Vision contest yeah, where Australia yeah. sponsors an event for the Asian region, mm. like what you did in Eurovision, mm. but do it one do one here. Um, what do you reckon? I did Eurovision, and that, as I said, it was like the most well organised thing in the world. It was amazing how all these different countries could actually come together and sing and, and you know, kind of celebrate music in a non-political way. And mm. I just thought it's so much fun if someone can bother to organise it. Like, I think So it's, it's worth it if someone's got the ability to make I it happen. I think so. And mm. I, I think we shouldn't call it Asia Vision. It should be more Asia Pacific and include, you know, like New Zealand, mm -hmm. Australia, you mm. know, Samoa. Like, you know, there's so many different cultures, like, musical cultures around the world and why don't we put them all on one stage and uh, enjoy it I, I think that's a good idea do you think yes yes <laughs> i do you I mean, logan you grew up in fairly sort of humble circumstances in logan how much of logan is in dami how much of logan yeah oh <laughs> uh, uh, i i never really thought logan was different to brisbane i it was just I don't know just the culture was very like relaxed and mm -hmm. you know we have the beautiful you know parks and the the koala park you know daisy hill conservation mm -hmm. koala park which i love love got still love going and just walking down and there's not much not many people there there's more wallabies in that <laughs> park and just um I, I guess yeah it's i would always have a piece of that in me like where i just like to have that uh, relaxed you know, mm. relax or like that in my heart like I just like to be um, 
low key and just spending time with the family and I think that's what I guess what Brisbane and Logan is like. Tell me about the uh, the Im family. <laughs> there's you know there's sorry there's your mum and your dad. Who yep. else is in the family? Younger brother, two younger years brother. younger than me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Is he a cheeky, annoying younger brother, or is he alright? <laughs> he's uh, he's he's pretty good. He, I mean, he picks me up a lot from the airport these days, like two or three times a week. So I, I better be good to him. <laughs> you know, thanks, he's Kenny. the taxi. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's basically my taxi driver. But he um, actually, when at Eurovision, they um interviewed me like on live, live going live to two hundred million people in the world. And the guy asked me, he said, oh, what did you do before you came on stage? And I, I said something really stupid, like, I drank water. And I said, what are you, you going to do after, after this is over? And I said, I'll drink lemonade. And he was just, oh, he's just on the spot. And my brother just kept making fun of me, bagging me up. Oh, drink water, drink lemonade. Ha ha. Like, you said that in front of 200 million people. Good job, lemonade. I'm like, thanks. Thanks. Stop reminding me. You're embarrassed. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> My guest is Dami Im. She was born in Korea since the age of nine. She lived in Logan. And as you know, her career has been uh, spoken of, admired and seen around the world. When she's performed, been heard on radio stations uh, and more. Who was the first radio station to play your song? Do you know? Because you did the X Factor. Yeah. So, so I'm talking, when you first kicked it off, so you won the X Factor, people went, wow, who is this woman? Yeah. And it went bang. Do you know who it was? Uh, it was. It sort of happened all at the same time. Okay, it's, yeah. It just, yeah. Like I, I, I went in and did X Factor for like 12 weeks and then I was in this bubble and then I came out and it, my song was being played everywhere. Yeah. I think it was not long after then I saw you at a shopping centre signing autographs or what yeah. have you. No, but you sort of get dragged around from shopping centre to shopping centre, don't you? I did, I did. Yeah. Um, what yeah. was that like? That was really hard for me. Like, I... Now I can say that because it's over, like, three years ago now. And now I have a bit more control over what I want to do. But at the time, I had no idea what I had to do as this pop person, pop star, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was doing so much, you know, shopping center appearances, uh, photo shoots for magazines, interview after interview. I think the day after my win on X Factor, I actually did over 80 interviews, 80 oh. separate interviews. And talking about the exact same thing. I'm so, so that sorry. Really I'm so sorry. My soul. Oh. <laughs> but now, now I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm back. <laughs> I'm an old person. See, this is every radio announcer's fear. Now, you want to ask a question that's the killer question, that's the really important, interesting yes, one. You're not doing the same, a great job. Not the same damn way. one you've been asked every time you've been interviewed. <laughs> I just, yeah, I was saying, why can't they all come into one place? And I say, well, so that everybody can get it. <laughs> well, Dami, finally, before I let you go, for the next Eurovision, what if Australia's there again, what advice, we're going to be there again, aren't we? What advice would you give whoever performs? Oh, I mean, I would just say, um just try and enjoy it because it is insane um you will be tired you will be uh you know pulled everywhere in every direction mm -hmm. but it's the most incredible experience it was for me so i uh, try and enjoy all of that and soak that in well, you've won me over dummy and thanks for coming in best of luck for the future thanks for having me Fabulous, babe. You're wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, you are.